project. Uh, if you're thinking of doing this project, there's a few things to consider. Um, the manifold, exhaust manifold on the 4BT puts the turbo straight down. Um, we want to put the bigger turbo on and that doesn't give us any room for the intake. So what we're going to do is take the exhaust manifold off of the 5.9 which has the turbo coming out on an angle rather than it going straight down and that'll put the turbo a little bit off to the side and uh, will allow us to clear the oil filter housing and we're gonna steal this um, assembly for the uh, thermostat we also stole um, the plate that goes on the intake and we're gonna put our preheater on there as well so we're gonna modify the plate what happens is straight 12 volts goes in and these plates become cherry red just like the uh, stove would uh, the problem with glow plugs is um, individual glow plugs go in cylinders and um, they get red hot but if you're glow plug plugging while you're cranking over your engine, the cold fuel hits the glow plugs and burns them out. This preheater will never burn out. This housing um, is off of the 5.9 and it has the mounting bolts for the AC compressor. Um, I want to keep the AC, so we're going to adapt that to fit the GM AC compressor. We're also going to do our dreaded um, stud that rattles out and mashes up all of your teeth. Um, so we'll show you how to do that little piece. We're just going to cut a piece of steel, just a circle with a point sticking out to cover up the pin. And um, I've seen other people put a bolt through the outside or a self-tapping screw, but that looks kind of like a hack job. We're not going to do that one on this one. This is our crankshaft. As you can see, it's got a little groove in it that's worn from the old seal. The old seal was flush with the top of the timing cover. If we put the seal back in the same spot, it'll ride on that groove and it'll leak. What we want to do is push the seal a little lower, making sure it's perfectly even, and um, making sure we do not pull this little plastic ring out. That ring is meant to go on the crankshaft, and that eliminates any chance of cutting that seal when you put it on. This is the 4BT just about dressed. I got the exhaust manifold of the 5.9 on there. I'm not exactly sure what the best spot for the turbo is. This manifold is nice that the fact that you can put it upside down, um, the bolts still line up and because it's a six cylinder going on a four cylinder, I can move it uh, an ear forward or an ear back and that will um, put the turbo in a different spot wherever I like it best, but we'll leave that for when it's in the, in the Tahoe. I've got my cooler lines off of the 5.9. Um, I got to put my alternator on, but uh, it's going to go right here. But I have to take the manifold off to do that. I can put the AC compressor on yet. Um, I also have the preheater on off the 5.9. So this is the plate off the 5.9. We just cut the end off of both sides and then uh, welded the connection tight and then machined it flat so that the gasket will seal properly. Um, we're going to uh, take our um, fuel pump apart, give it a little extra fuel. I also have the turbo off the 5.9 on there, so just give it a little more boost. Um, nothing crazy. And then uh, there we'll go. I'm going to show you guys how to braze. This is my cast manifold off of the 5.9, which is going on the 4BT. So we cut two cylinders off. I took a piece of the casting cut it out of my cutoff piece and stuck it in that way we got the same materials you can weld cast the problem is it expands and contracts so much that if you weld it cold it'll crack you need special cast rod for it and you'd have to heat up the entire thing um, so it's red hot and then weld it so everything shrinks at the same time and your welds don't crack another way to do it is brazing there's not much pressure here um, so I prefer to braze. Uh, you can buy your brazing rod just at your hardware store. Um, it comes with a nice coating on it to protect it, but if you uh, want to be cheap, you can use a coat hanger if you want. There you go. Whatever you do, do not cool it with anything but normal air. And that's a nice looking little breeze. So this is what your 4BT should look like as it's about to go into the truck. Um, close of a mock-up as you can, saves time uh, later. What we've done is put the 5.3 the alternator on it. We've kept it as close to the engine as possible so that we've got room for our intake pipe to come off our turbo. 
um, put the turbo on a 5.3 exhaust manifold and then braze the end shut. Um, you can actually put that manifold however you want. You can have it farther back, farther forward, and then flip it upside down too. So essentially, you can have your turbo here, 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 here or here. Works out really, really nice, whatever you want. Um, that's the beauty of the 5.9 and the, and the 3.9. Um, to make the turbo spool up faster, we've added some Mexican chrome. We've uh, shortened the exhaust so that it drops down as quick as possible. Hopefully it doesn't get in the way of uh, the uh, AC, otherwise we'll have to add another bend, but we can do that later. We're going to tune up the pump and give it a little more oomph with the uh, aneroid valve, the uh, fuel um, screw there, and um, we put a new lift pump on so we're good to go. Uh, we're going to degrease it, paint it, and Get ready to start putting it into the Tahoe. extension cord sticking out the front of your vehicle is, it's a block heater. Um, what it is is a heating element that goes into your antifreeze or cooling system and warms it up for easier starting. Uh, very helpful for diesels and almost necessary in uh, Canada here. It's minus 30 outside today. Um, couldn't get my 5.9 going because the heater was burnt out. Um, what it, they, they sit in these water jackets. Um, sometimes mistaken as frost plugs, they are not frost plugs. Um, some people believe that if your antifreeze uh, is not strong enough to deal with the cold temperatures and freezes, these will pop out and prevent your block from freezing. That is not the case. All they are are water jacket plugs. So we'll show you how to install one of those today. A little bit of Vaseline, put it on your O-ring. No chance of cutting the O-ring when you're putting it on or it reduces the risk. This is our 4BT and you can see the cylinders through our oil cooler hole. It has a little film on it. This should have had antifreeze changed earlier. We wouldn't get this film. If you have a coolant filter, you do want to see a little film here. And what that is, is generally you have a wet sleeve engine. What that means is you can pull your cylinders out and replace your cylinders when you're rebuilding your engine and uh, you get a brand new engine. This would have to be machined uh, if I wanted to do a rebuild. And you can see that's a it's a one piece, so it's called a dry sleeve, meaning you cannot pull these cylinders out. Um, your coolant filter doesn't filter your coolant. What it does is it puts a little film on the cylinders. Um, as your piston is coming down on its uh, power stroke, it's actually vibrating coming down in minuscule little forms. Um, what it's doing is pushing your coolant away from the cylinders and creates an implosion that if that film wasn't there, it would eat at the steel. With the film on there, it it um, eats at that film and keeps your cylinders in good shape. Um, it's called cavitation. I know the John Deere's were bad for it way back when. Um, the coolant filters seem to take care of that. Um, change your filter every time you change your oil. Uh, they're cheap enough and uh, unless your manufacturer says uh, to do it at a certain recommended time, um, it shouldn't be a problem to change it every time you do an oil change. Our oil cooler consists of the oil filter housing with valleys at the back where the oil transfers through these holes into the cooler that sits in the water. 
Now the, the point of this is to uh, moderate the oil uh, temperature of the engine, keep it steady. As pieces are expanding and contracting with the heat, you want as little of that as possible because different materials expand and contract at a different rate. Um, it's less wear on the engine if everything is very consistent. Now, your oil pressure runs up to about 70 psi, 20 at an idle, whereas your coolant pressure runs up to about 14 psi. So while you're running, if you've got a leak in your cooler, the oil pressure is putting oil into your antifreeze. When you shut your truck off, um, the oil pressure stops. Now the system is still under pressure. You can get water in your oil. So if you do an oil change, you see water in there. You don't, it might not be a head gasket necessarily. It could be an oil cooler. Um, this is also very common if you've had freezing because there's very thin layers of uh, um, gaps in between here, the water freezes in there and wrecks these coolers. So um, pull your cooler before you diagnose the, uh, the head gasket. Installing a fan belt with an idler is really easy if you know what you're doing. I know I've, before I knew anybody, I'm trying to push on this and get my fan belt around. Every single idler has a square socket in it for either a half inch or a three eighths um, ratchet. And all you have to do is lean on it. Put your belt on, make sure all your ribs are lined up proper, and you're done. So follow a variety of projects that include conversions and repairs to anything from Ferraris to chainsaws. And check out the Tape Boss, my newest invention that's coming to market. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.